Hi there, welcome back to the Dylan Rounds case. Today I want to analyse and put into perspective how detrimental was it the event that occurred on June 2nd, 2022, that being spring cleaning at the scene of the crime by Brenner himself and the key people around, including authority, that witnessed it happen and didn't do much about it. No protesting, no resistance, it is what it is. How damaging was it on the case if it never happened, if Brenner was stopped and that the key people were able to look inside of the shed, what would they have found, etc. They're kind of the points going to be talking about today. Um, I did come across an article recently, an old one, and it came in relation to the boots, the phone and all of that. We don't need to focus on that part today because we've already done that previously in the last video. In case you missed out on the last video, quite an interesting perspective, things that have been talked about never before on my channel until now, make sure to catch up on that video. Top right corner of the screen where that I symbol is, you click on that, drop down box, you'll be able to watch the video when you've got time, okay? But right now, we need to focus on a different event, an event that occurred a bit later on, past the point of Dylan's death, okay? June 2nd. Family are already down, police presence, search and rescue, etc. Brenner not anticipating the response from those people so quickly, okay? The recent theme what we've brought up into play, into discussion, is that Brenner may have done a messy job at disposing certain evidence besides the body being successful because Dylan's not been found yet. But the other bits of evidence along the way, it's been retrieved. It's been found somewhere and traces have been found on such as the phone with the time-lapse footage, etc. Incriminating evidence, key turning point. For further reference on that, check out the video that I did yesterday. I symbol top right, click on that, okay? That when focusing on the event of spring cleaning, maybe there are some additional items, key bits of evidence within the murder of Dylan, which were left in the shed, either because that's where the actual murder took place inside the shed, or that Dylan was taken in there and finished off, or something criminal happened in the, in the area, the proximity, right? And with Brenner not anticipating a fast response from family police, that Brenner had things stored in the shed. And when he knew about the presence of people down there, he thought, oh, I'd better get on into the grain shed property and move things about, right? That's kind of like what we're talking about today. That's how it's been described in the past. It never really changed that story, okay? So if people want to critique Candace Cooley or some others for the story, the narrative, this is the one example which hasn't changed much at all. There were some people in the background, typical, that were saying that Brenner never got in the grain truck and drove it out or reversed it out and it never happened. It was never parked in the shed. Well, what's the point? Somebody just driving it down then and then just leaving it there then, right? Because might as well bring it up now, right? I have done alternative theories and ideas saying how, uh, let's say Dylan, in the grain truck, getting on down to the grain shed property, and then in the process of reversing into the shed and supposedly the horse gate being damaged in the process, as described by Brenner, post-death of when Justin Rounds was talking to Brenner, and that's what Brenner said, and it angered him, annoyed him, right? Maybe when that did happen, Dylan hesitated and stopped because he knew he damaged the gate, got out, Brenner got out of his trailer, confrontation, and then that's when it went down, right? But in the process of all that, maybe then Dylan taken into the shed temporarily, let's say out of sight, maybe the grain truck too to conceal the opening of the shed, block it out a little bit, I don't know. Because look at this, um, when the family are down, the police are down, grain truck found inside of the shed parked, okay? Whether that be by Dylan or Brenner, right? If it was by Dylan to keep the truck safe from the rain or most of the truck, the load in the back, the seed, that would make sense. If it was Brenner responsible for parking the truck in the shed, 
I'm not saying, I'm not going with the other narrative where Brenner took the truck from Dylan's farm up to the shed. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying, just for context, that Dylan did make it up and down to the grain shed property and in the process of reversing and damaging the gate, he stopped and then Dylan taken out because of the snap and anger by Brenner and then Brenner then parking the truck in the shed himself. Why would Brenner park the truck in the shed himself? To make it seem not so suspicious? No, Brenner wouldn't have known about Dylan having to park the truck in the shed. It wasn't expected. I guess it caught him off guard. But besides Dylan's reasoning of a, uh, the truck being in the shed or partially to protect the seed, because if it gets damaged, that's a waste of money, waste of resource, very valuable in the eyes of Dylan. In Brenner's eyes, he doesn't care about the truck. He doesn't care about the seed. Maybe he just wanted to park the truck in the shed just to fill it out a little bit. Because if you think about it later, fast forward on to June 2nd, Brenner having to get in the truck, drive it out, and then start rummaging about and bagging stuff. Well, clearly there's not enough space when the truck is in there to begin with. So it adds to a bit of concealment. So whatever that was in the shed at the time, whether it be by Brenner or Dylan parking it in there, it formed as a bit of concealment. If anything was behind the truck or to the sides, up against the walls, you might not be able to see it as clearly when the truck's in there. So that's what gave Brenner a bit of time, right, to be able to then get on with the spring cleaning. That's just a possibility, okay? So either Brenner or Dylan parked truck in shed. It's presumed that Dylan parked the truck in the shed, right? In my eyes, Dylan made an attempt to park it, but maybe in supposedly breaking that horse gate, as Brenner said, it might it might have halted Dylan's actions, unless he was in a great rush and just sped right on through and reversed in. And it happened in a matter of seconds, just like that. Either way, grain truck found part in shed, okay? But the, sp the spring cleaning is the most important focus, right? I mean, there's no harm in talking about the, the grain truck accidentally breaking the horse gate, and we'll see that in a photo later today. So make sure to stick around. Because if you look at it like this, if the horse gate being damaged triggers Brenner because of noise and damage and recklessness, and it might link to the horse protectiveness of keeping it in or using it as a means to keep the horse in, not at the time though, I would, I would assume, right? Brenner could be very protective over his horse. So if anything harms his horse or indirectly causes trouble, which isn't needed, that will get on Brenner's bad side, bad books. If it was Dylan accidentally causing it. I think Dylan was in a bit of a hurry and a rush considering the way the weather was. So mistakes could have been made, right? The odd accident of possibly breaking something which could have been the catalyst for Brenner snapping but all I would say is if Dylan did everything right and Brenner wasn't as moody on the day all that would have happened is Dylan would have lived another day until the inevitable because if Dylan was going to continue being around someone like Brenner surely at some point it would happen. Now knowing what Brenner is like was like and is past history, right? You wouldn't have anticipated it at the time quite the same as when looking at it now, right? That's why early on, when hearing about the previous charges of Brenner, right, and work disputes and how he doesn't like being spoken to at times, and it's happened over and over again, it, it would be that even if everything was okay on the day of the 28th of May, what about the day after? What about in a few months' time? What if Dylan says the slightest the wrong thing to Brenner or how he words it and then Brenner takes offence? Look back at when Justin Rounds was kind of having a go at Brenner way back in the past years ago and then after that Brenner said to Dylan indirectly or Dylan overheard Brenner that he was threatening to kill Justin Rounds. Massive red flag. So you could say that Brenner gets easily triggered and a little bit sensitive, gets offended very easily, right? And whilst people can use that towards others in life, as we see day-to-day -day basis, 
when you're dealing with a potentially triggered, oversensitive, overreactional individual who is also dangerous, it's best not to poke them or they may snap, they may fight back. And that could have been one of the reasons behind all this, right? A snap in the moment, but a buildup of jealousy, a buildup in frustration with Dylan. You know, you want further analysis there behind motives of Brenner and why he did what he did, snap or not. Look back to my previous videos because it's all covered there, okay? But besides all of that, the grain shed focus with what's gone on there, supposed activity before and after, hole in the back, never acknowledged by the family, never acknowledged by the police. Yeah, it's blatantly obvious there was a hole dug there by someone, supposedly FBI. Must be somewhat important because it's never been mentioned publicly, yet it was never filled back in. Just a brief question to anyone. If it was done in a secretive way and it was important evidence retrieved from there, or even if it wasn't, why was it left as an open hole? Why was it not filled in? Was it done like that? Was it left open just so people could identify by it's already been searched? I mean, to be fair, when you look at the other areas, the search areas, Dylan's main line, where they said they've dug it up twice now, right? You go back there months or a year later, is it going to look like it's been dug up, turned over? Maybe not, right? You look at the dirt mound, they said they searched through that or so, but when Glorindellen went, right, it was still a, a perfectly shaped mound. It wasn't flattened, it wasn't destroyed, it was still as a mound. Obviously, people can be careful and delicate with how they search areas, but I'm, I'm just trying to understand why is it left the way it is, right? Like with the hole in the grain shed, why was it not filled in? Why is it left open and exposed? Because... Whilst whatever was found there could be very important and it can't be shared to the public, okay, fair enough. But why leave it there so it looks like something interesting has happened? If you want to keep it quiet, why not just fill it in for the sake of it? Unless it's because the family weren't anticipating others to go over to the grain shed property and record it all. Because look at Heavy D, right? Heavy D and his crew, when they did that second video with Candice Cooley, Justin Rounds, the interview, not once did they mention about the hole in the back and that the way they had the camera set up, it was a blind spot where Candice Cooley was sat in that lawn chair just behind her. That's where the hole was, but you couldn't see it. You couldn't visualise it unless you have seen it before the actual hole itself and where it's positioned. But then again, to be honest, Justin Rounds, way back in the past of 2022, I believe, a nighttime photo was taken, I believe, by Justin Rounds in his truck on the outside of the grain shed, looking in through his own vehicle, through the window, the front window, dashboard. And um, sort of crack on the glass, whatever. You could see within the grain shed, as dark as it was, he had the lights on and you could see some items moved about, but you could also see the hole in the background. So that was still kind of obvious there. So yeah, it was publicly documented by outsiders and also just in rounds, but maybe they weren't thinking people would pick up on the hole, maybe. But as we said in the past, supposedly the Shack Lady and Candace Howard had inside information that the family would never talk about it openly but those two individuals did in some way or another, and it passed on. Very dodgy, right? But nevertheless, excluding the hole, because we might as well just acknowledge it all when it comes to the grain shed, okay? Might not be that big, but enough space for things to go down in there, let's just say, and storage areas, such as, I believe it was, was it a chicken coop, that red that red like box where chickens would be put into, similar to what Brenner had, I guess, that is a former burnt down trailer across the border, Nevada, right? I was saying that the door, the hatch on the side, could that have been open and things stuffed in there to conceal and hide evidence? Because I guess it comes down to this factor, right? Besides the time factor of how long Brenner thought 
he had to dispose of Dylan and the rest of the evidence compared to what real time he did have when he got a reality check of when the police the family came on down which urged him to move on with the spring cleaning which I guess with the timeline did it coincide with did it coincide with Kurt Wadsworth making a call the hostage situation no that was on the 31st of May went on down to Montello we're talking June 2nd when family presence was at Grain Shed, when police at Grain Shed. So we can't link the Kurt Wadsworth call to June 2nd. Not It doesn't apply as a decoy because it happened on different days and family were in different places. I know some people previously said, well, what about the gun and key fob, such as the 1st of June? Well, it depends if the police and presence and family were down in Montello from the 31st to the 1st of June. If so, yeah, that's a decoy you could highlight, like potential theory. But as for the 2nd of June, by then, as it's been worded officially, presence back in Lucin, Utah. So I don't think it links that. But with Brenner, was Brenner confident with what he was doing? Did he just think that he could get away with it? I mean, he, he did, didn't he? Did he surprised himself. Was he expecting to get caught or questioned when he was doing what he was doing? I wonder. Or is he just so past caring and in a world of his own that he didn't even think that what he's doing could be considered questionable or suspicious, right? I mean, most of the time, even criminals in more populated areas wouldn't just simply walk on into an active ongoing crime scene investigation with a pleasant presence of police and simply just pick up things and walk away with them. People in the right mind wouldn't do that even if they were responsible and guilty for what they did and if they did leave things behind they would probably try and clean up after themselves during times of when it's quieter or there's no one around or try and cause a distraction to then take things away from the scene. Brenner just walked on free like that. I mean, the only excuse you could say is with Brenner living next to the grain shed, where could he go, right? You know, let's just ask another question, if anyone can answer it, right? Besides the LE that were assigned to this Box Elder County Police Sheriff's Police County, besides Box Elder, in a different setting, in a different state, different county, maybe similar terrain or environment but not as desolate or as far away and a more competent LE. In a different time, if someone like Brenner or someone similar to Brenner was living at the scene of the crime scene or very nearby, trailer next to shed where things supposedly happened, let's call it that, right? In other cases or in most cases, would the person living on site be ordered to move away from the scene of the crime? Yes or no? I'm wondering. Um, what I do know is when it's come to the UK and there's been an investigation within a neighbourhood, depending on the severity of it, like an unknown package or substance found, and it could be a threat to lives of people in that neighbourhood that can be ordered to leave their homes and not return back until they're allowed to, right? But if a scene, a crime has already taken place, like the death of someone, murder, someone getting hurt, hit and run, whatever, what's the chances that you're going to be ordered out of your house and moved on, right? I think sometimes they might suggest stay in your homes, don't leave, because you might get in the way. I guess it depends how close you are to the scene of the crime. If it's outside your house, maybe there's not much you can do about it. If it's involved within your house, then you might be ordered to move away so you don't contaminate anything or harm the investigation. With Brenner, his trailer being, this, being near to the grain shed property, that's probably what gave him the excuse to get out of his trailer and to walk into the Grain Shed property because either they were treating it as, well, Brenner is a part of this case due to being a person of interest and being close to where this all happened. 
So Brenner is a part of the crime scene and he can't leave the area. Well, that would be false because you fast forward on with the spring cleaning and Brenner and Don Hatley pairing up and going somewhere down to, let's say, Wendover to possibly dispose of the bin bags. Now, we are skipping ahead there, but what it does put into perspective is what Brenner can just come and go if he chooses, if he pleases, whilst living and being present at the scene of the crime and close to the crime scene. Yeah, it seems very reckless that. So if someone like Brenner can come and go whenever he feels like, despite being a person of interest and not being apprehended immediately on top of those pending charges in the past, it's no surprise as to why Brenner was able to do the spring cleaning and just get on with it without having to worry. Because in many other cases out there, a person wouldn't be able to do that. And if you are on site at the scene of the crime and maybe you live there, you might even be ordered to stay until the investigation is done or the questioning is complete. Like you can't leave the area in between, right? But in Brenner's case, you had more free will and freedom, which probably isn't a good thing and detrimental to the case. It's trying to understand how damaging was it. And as for the opportunity of additional evidence, whether it be Dylan Rounds himself or items of Dylan, or items of Brenner, or even the murder weapon, stuff like that. What exactly was discarded? How important was it to the case? And if it was retrieved or found, would it lead to Dylan? Or would it be a new lead, a new direction elsewhere with another criminal out there? It's trying to understand all of that. What we can do, first of all, is just look at a formal article just to read a portion of that. And then there is a photo provided by East Idaho News. Don't know who took it. So besides Pancakes and his footage in the past, and besides Glorin Dellen, of course, there are additional formal photos as well by the news groups, I guess. And to be honest, even if you're looking at the same location, but from a different angle, or a different time of when it was taken, it could be more relevant to the time of Dylan's death compared to months later when people ended up visiting, going to the area, right? When police were no longer there or family. So we can do any comparisons or pick up on any stuff that was moved about compared to what it was at a later point. I guess we'll see, right? Um, the article is longer, but we don't need to look at it all. We're just focusing on this particular event, spring cleaning and how detrimental it was to the case of Dylan Rounds. I've done these similar events retrospectively in recent time. You can always catch up on them. What I didn't say earlier on is welcome to those people that are currently watching this live premiere. Feel free to share your thoughts, opinions, reactions, your opinions in the live chat box. And in general, if anyone has questions or additional points, opinions you want to elaborate, leave all your comments down below under this video. It will help spread awareness with the case and Dylan Round's name, and it might generate new ideas, you never know. Down below, pinned comment by me, there are some additional links if you wish to check them out, if you want to support this channel. So, without all being said and done, let's get straight into this main part of the video and look at the article right away. Well, here we are, East Idaho News. It's an old article, this, in case you're wondering, not new. Little subheading here saying activity at the grain shed. It says the parents say one point of interest in the investigation is a shed near Brenner's camper. A few days after Dylan disappeared, June 2nd, Candace Cooley and Justin Rounds say, along with law enforcement present, they watched Brenner spend time in the shed. So basically, Candice Cooley was there on site, Justin Rounds, and the law enforcement, the LE. Now, it's interesting how there was a bit of BS in the past. And I do remember Tom Evans that passed it on from elsewhere, supposedly claiming Candice Cooley was at the gate using binoculars. What? Not exactly worded like this here, is it? So the family were able to get a good view of Brenner, and so did the police. But what did they do about it? In quotes, it says, Brenner pulled the grain truck out on his own and cleaned it. He was cleaning the shed with law enforcement and us there watching him. 
Cooley says, I saw him take out four garbage bags and put them in the back of his pickup. So does that read correctly? Does that check out? Well, I've heard it worded like this before. There's only one little point which I wasn't aware of, where it says Brenner was cleaning... Um, well, actually, is it how I read it, maybe? No, 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 I did read it correctly. Yeah, no, it's it's the bit before that. Besides cleaning the shed, it reads here, Brenner pulled the grain truck out, so he got in the truck, drove it out to create more space inside of the shed. Yes, I remember hearing that. But then it says he did it on his own and cleaned it. Wait, are you saying that Brenner cleaned down the grain truck and the police just stood there and watched? I mean, I know it's bad enough Brenner bagging things up at the scene of a crime, a crime scene, and being allowed to do that. But blatantly cleaning the grain truck down, which was used supposedly by Dylan Rounds on the day, the last person to drive that truck, and the police and family sit back and allow it? Was there any um, protesting from Candice Cooley just in Rounds then? Just sitting back and watching Brenner do all that? That's really not normal. Now, Tell me if it's been worded wrong here about cleaning the grain truck. Because I've never heard it worded like that before. Only cleaning inside of the shed, not cleaning down the grain truck. I mean, as a heads up, when the police did check out the grain truck, they didn't find anything. Oh, is that because Brenner cleaned it down? Well, I don't think so. When they looked through the seed, they didn't find anything. But inside of the grain truck, they said that they found the DNA of Dylan Rounds, of course, but of Brenner as well, and Don Hatley. Now, there was no, like, dates provided. They couldn't date back who or when used it at a certain point in time, right? They couldn't say, well, there's DNA here of Don Hatley, so that means he used it on the day of the 28th or the day before. No, it's just the... A range of different people used the grain truck. Now, why did a range of different people use it then? Is it because Don Hatley Brenner working for Dylan at some point or another said they were given permission to use that grain truck? Maybe. I mean, I can understand Dylan's DNA being found on the truck inside because of using it on the day of the 28th. And then, as for Brenner, well, I could understand that because of Brenner June 2nd getting into the truck and moving it about, so handling the wheel. So after Dylan using the truck, Brenner was the next person to use it. So it could date back to then, even though no clear date was provided. But it would be obvious because if the police saw Brenner touching the vehicle and leaving prints, well, of course, when they do um, take it to the lab and analyse, of course, they're going to find Brenner's prints on it because they literally saw him touching and handling the vehicle. So it's nothing groundbreaking there. Of course, the question as did Brenner touch it, use it before that, prior to Dylan's disappearance? Maybe, maybe not, but they couldn't date back. As for Don Hatley, though, that is probably the key one that stands out the most. Because, okay, it makes sense with Dylan and Brenner when you look at the story and how it's gone before and after. But where does Don Hatley fit into this of when he used the grain truck of Dylan's? At what point? Months ago? A year ago? A few weeks before? You know? What was going on there? I, I guess Dylan's grain truck was on his land, on his farm, during the times of when Dylan was elsewhere custom farm working, maybe. Correct me if I'm wrong. But at what point did Don Hatley touch and use Dylan's grain truck? And why? Because of work-related tasks? Such as before the six-week period of Dylan doing custom farm work elsewhere, and before Don parting ways with Dylan after that argument, before that or after and why? Was there any suspicious things going on there? Because we've looked at Don Hatley already. To know that he's handled the grain truck makes you wonder why. And I'm just basing all this off how the story has gone and how it's been told in the news over time and from what Candice Cooley just in rounds have said. Okay, that's all I'm doing. And it was mentioned on East Idaho News in case you're wondering. Anything else here? 
No, it's just about cleaning the truck down. I don't remember hearing it ever being mentioned that Brenner did that, so that caught me off guard. We do have a photo here, though, which we can probably have a closer look at shortly after. Then we can fit it on screen because it's a bit big here. Right, a shed near James Brenner's trailer, courtesy of Candice Cooley. So basically, Candice Cooley took this photo. So I guess quite early on when this photo was taken, but probably after June 2nd or during June 2nd, because obviously the grain truck isn't parked in there. But there are some items moved about, which could make you think, but depend, you know, if it's been searched or if Brenner moved items about, that's probably why it looks the way it does, because those items there obviously wouldn't be there as an obstruction if the truck was parked in, because it'd be in the way. So one thing came before the other, the truck. Now, what says Brenner was charged in Utah on June 23rd with three counts of being a restricted person in possession of a firearm and has not returned to the property. Um, Candice Cooley and Justin Rounds recently visited the shed and say it was full of trash and empty beer cans, in quotes. He wasn't cleaning up garbage that day, Cooley says. Whatever he took out in those bags was to hide right under the law enforcement noses. Seen that photo before. And what's this? So, yeah, the blue mistakes were made. So I guess the interesting thing here with this article, one thing it doesn't mention or acknowledge, but Candice Cooley did explain it in an old interview. I think it was East Idaho News, and it may have been in one of Doug's live streams as well. I did cover it on my channel in a past video, but I can't remember exactly which video, okay? But just to relay, right? So besides the description further up, I think, where it said he, uh, Candice Cooley said she saw him take out four garbage bags and put them in the back of Brenner's own pickup truck, right? Now, it wasn't exactly confirmed as to what day it happened, but Candice Cooley did say that Brenner and Don, with the bags in the back of the pickup truck, they then drove off to Wendover, maybe to dispose of the trash. So whilst Don Hatley was present with Brenner on the day Dylan Rounds was murdered, later on in the day hanging out together, Don Hatley being in the presence of Brenner, what was said, what was done there? Was Don Hatley aware? Yes or no? Fast forward onwards, after the police presence and family presence, Brenner wanting to pass the firearms on to Don Hatley there. Don accepting first time round, then later regretting it and turning on Brenner. In between those two events, in between spring cleaning, right? Because Brenner was eventually taken in. Right, as we've seen, like with the, the gun charges, one of the catalysts, taking him in, apprehending him. Unrelated to the case at the time, but it got him away from the area. So before Don Hatley surrendered the firearms in to the police, FBI did the interview, grasped on Brenner. Before that, but after, after the barbecue. So in between the 29th up to early June which involves spring cleaning, the 2nd of June, that Don Hatley was still in the presence of Brenner after what's happened and what's gone down. So Don being a close friend to Brenner, but also being close to Brenner at the time of all this unfolding, right? Was Don an accomplice of Brenner? Did Don learn about Brenner and what he did? Did Don play a major role or not? Because for Don to hang around a key suspect early on and maintain that connection and that closeness without thinking, hmm, maybe I should keep away, maybe they were in on it together, just down to how close they were and in proximity to one another, and that when certain events or things went down, they were seen together, right? You look back at it, 
uh, 28th of May 2022, Don Hatley and Brenner together at the barbecue, post Dylan's death. The 29th, Brenner, Don Hatley together once again, searching for Dylan Rounds, supposedly. Then you had the background rumour that Don Hatley Brenner went on a fishing trip as well on the same day, supposedly. Then you had the alternative rumour that they weren't searching for Dylan, but they were in a bar together hanging out. Was that all true? Maybe not. But in terms of the rumours and the supposed events that did happen, such as searching for Dylan, they were together. So they were together on the day Dylan would was curled. They were together the day later. They were together on June 2nd and onwards during the spring cleaning and then disposing the items going down to Wendover, right? So on a couple of different occasions, they've been close together. So how much does Don Hatley really know? So that's, that's the interesting part there, right? Keeping that closeness to Brenner after everything that's going on. You know, if Don Hatley was truly innocent, but if Don was aware of what Brenner has done in the past, would at any point Don be a little bit cautious and wondering, hmm, I wonder what, I wonder if Brenner's responsible. Because if Don did have the slightest of doubt, I don't think Don would want to associate himself with Brenner at that time. Probably he would want to distance himself unless Don was involved from the beginning and thought, well, I can't get away I can't escape this right now, so I'll just keep on doing what I'm doing. There's different ways of looking at it, right? But as I said, different perspective once again. But yeah, some of the key information here is missed stuff, but it was mentioned in previous interviews back in the early days by Candice Cooley, and I believe when Justin Rounds was there too in some of the interviews, that basically Don Hartley and Brenner both went down to Wendover with the trash bags in the back of the pickup truck. Those trash bags may have been contents of key evidence from the grain shed of the scene of the crime and where Dylan was supposedly taken out. Wasted opportunity of evidence, no action taken. It's a great shame, isn't it? Now, with that in mind, we can go a little bit further and elaborate, but let's narrate over the photo of the grain shed and see if we can pinpoint anything of interest. Here we are. As said, it was credited that Candice Cooley was the one to take this photo. What I do find interesting, though, is on previous footage when Candice Cooley was down near, I think, maybe Dylan's farm or near to the dirt mound of the grain shed property, when Candice Cooley was walking around those areas, she originally reported seeing footprints in areas, which was a little bit odd and unusual, and those footprints weren't of Dylan's, supposedly. But as for the overall footage and video quality of that, which was, I think, provided to Mob Crew Chris or Tyler Feller, depending how it was passed about, but supposedly from Candice Cooley, the video quality was atrocious, it was blurry, it was the equivalent of going into the woodlands and trying to find a Sasquatch or a UFO in the sky, but obviously using a really bad phone camera quality to record it, so it's obscured and it's hard to see, and it's more likely to be believed in. Because the more crystal clear it is, the less of a mystery it is, because there might not actually be anything there, or it could be more identifiable and debunked, right? Not saying that that's with the Dylan Rounds case, but the quality, I noticed the pattern there. Though the quality of this photo provided is a lot clearer. So maybe Candice Cooley was using a different device, maybe. But when looking at this, this must be quite early on within the case. But you would think after the spring cleaning because the truck is not there. I mean, do we have any previous photos? Yes, we do. So this was obviously after the spring cleaning. This is G um, June 2nd spring cleaning as when the truck was taken out of the shed. I mean, you can clearly see there's some track marks, I think, or the odd line to show that the truck has you know moved out of the shed area. Um, would it have been June the 5th or June the 9th in between there when Heavy D and his crew went on down for the first time to do the flyby over, to monitor the area, to talk with Candice Cooley just in rounds, if you, if you remember that very first video. And this is one of the, you know, flybys which they captured the Grain Shed property at the time. The 
backhoe of Kurt Wadsworth wasn't there at that moment, but it was later. That Brennis Camper was there, and as you can see, present. Now, there's a chance that that door is a little bit open because I can see like a gap in it. Was Brenner secretly peeping around to see what was in the sky? Maybe, you never know. Nearby, you got that burn barrel as well. So, if we can put into perspective, this area here of Brenner's trailer bought by Dylan Rounds in the past is what we see here. This area. This area on ground is what you see here. Okay, just as a reference point, so you can tell it was taken away. That's a little shed with some items. Brenner's shed, I think, as it's been described. Not too much of interest in the case. You can see the bare patch. So when referring back to this, either the grain truck is parked outside after the spring cleaning or it's been taken away completely. No date has been provided as to when this photo was taken, but it was by Candice Cooley. So it would have been really early on, but probably just after June the 2nd, or maybe on the day of June 2nd, after Brenner did what he did. So anything that was bagged and taken away, we're not going to see in this photo, right? Because it's the after events, which is unfortunate, right? Just imagine if we had a photo even if it was just looking on the inside like this and not actually going inside of it to the end of the room. But there's an original photo. Just imagine if you could compare and contrast if that was even possible. Or if someone was able to like record Brenner bagging the stuff. I just feel like you've got the presence of police that should have a duty to treat it with you know, serious nature and say, hey, Brenny, you shouldn't be doing this. This is a crime scene, even though it wasn't officially treated as one or labelled as one, but technically it was one, if you think about it. Police should have not allowed Brenner to do what he did. Now, what about the family? What about Candice Cooley, Justin Rounds? Why did they not protest, or unless they did? Unless they thought that at the time they believed in the police. So if the police allowed Brenner to do what he did, then it obviously must be allowed. And now when looking back now, the family annoyed with it. But even if they were frustrated at the time and that maybe they couldn't do much at the time, well, what about after when Brenner Don Hatley drove off on the same day or a day or two later to Wendover? Why did no one follow that vehicle to see where it ended up and why they were going to Wendover? Were they disposing of those bin bags along the way or in Wendover? right? Lance Kelly, I think, is the only person to have tried searching for the bin bags. Unsuccessful, but an attempt was made. When you look at Candice Cooley, Justin Rounds, and the, the searches that have taken place over time, it's all about trying to find, locate Dylan. Dylan Rounds or Dylan Rounds remains as it is this day. Well, onwards, right? Because he's presumed dead. So it's all about finding Dylan. But what about the evidence along the way? Maybe because it seems like a lost cause now with the spring cleaning. There's no hope. It's not possible to retrieve those bags. Is it really impossible? Really? And why Why would Brenner go out of his way to Wendover to dispose of those bags, Right? You'd think he'd be lazy and chuck him out on the way down to Wendover before getting there, right? If you think about it in this way, Brenner on the 28th was going down to the barbecue of Don Hatley's and along the way disposed of the phone into Lucin Pond. The distance between Lucin Pond and where Brenner lives, or squats if you want to call it that, isn't great in distance, and if in a vehicle at the time, even smaller in distance, right? So Brenner disposes of certain evidence nearby to the scene of the crime and where Dylan was taken out. But then later, Brenner decides to dispose of four to eight bin bags and take them to Wendover greater in distance. Why is there such a, a mismatch of how you handle evidence? Dylan Round's phone, besides Dylan's body, is probably one of the most important pieces of evidence considering what was found on it. 
Yet Brenner underestimated that and disposed of it at the pond, thinking it was more than enough. But possibly due to a generational gap and lacking in knowledge with technology, let's just say, just for Brenner, Brenner may have underestimated how data can be traced, tracked and retrieved from a damaged phone, which he wasn't aware of at the time. But like Brenner's shirt with the blood on, leaving it in his trailer. You got Brenner, June 2nd, spring cleaning, tidying up inside of the grain shed as we see here. In a rush, not quite sure if he was moving about fast, but he did what he did and did it without much struggle. Uh, without any assistance was said though and it's not mentioned here but it was in the interviews Candace Cooley did say that the sheriff or detective went up to Brenner whilst it was going on and asked Brenner what are you doing in there and Brenner replied oh I'm just doing some spring cleaning clearing up and as Candace Cooley said later when Candace Justin looked inside it was still full of trash and rubbish and behind those bags over there there were some cans right and we've seen them ourselves so what else was Brenner getting rid of? Maybe Brenner was getting rid of trash, but didn't have enough time to get rid of the rest of the trash. But has it ever stopped him before? Why would Brenner be so concerned on that day as well in getting rid of trash in the trailer when Brenner knows that he's responsible for the death of Dylan, that Brenner knows that this is a scene of a crime, let's put it that way, with what he may have witnessed or what he did witness, right? Surely you could have picked a different day, right? A day or two later, a week later. Once the police, once the family moved away from the place and ticked it off the list as already searched and all the evidence retrieved. Why did Brenner have to pick this day out of them all? When the police were present, when the family were present? I think it's because there was something of worth and value to Brenner to get rid of because it would have traced him back to the scene of the crime and he didn't want that. Now, yes, it does not quite make sense if Brenner got rid of Dylan's boots and chucked them behind the dirt mound and did it in a reckless way and the phone at the pond nearby in proximity, they weren't disposed of correctly or appropriately. So why would Brenner put extra care and attention into the spring cleaning and getting rid of it? Because if you look back, the two things Brenner have has been successful with is disposing of Dylan's actual body. It's a form of desecration because Dylan hasn't been found yet after all these years. And that the bin bags from June the 2nd from the grain shed, which he got items out of the shed, put them into bags, put them into the back of his pickup truck, then went with Don Hatley to Wendover, supposedly, and then maybe disposed of them over that way. Well, the bin bags haven't been found either. So two key things which have been disposed and not recovered since. Is there a chance that the bin bags were taken in the direction as to where Dylan was buried? Yes or no? Is there a chance that the reason why those bin bags and why spring cleaning occurred on June 2nd and in the presence of police and family is because Brenner didn't anticipate such a fast response by those resources and felt, well, he better clean up after himself in the shed before any investigations go into the area to then search about. But if you think about it, by the 30th of May, a day or two later after what happened and what Brenner did, fast response from family police. So you're saying from the 30th of May up to June the 2nd, and not at one point did police or family take a thorough look inside of the grain shed before the spring cleaning? That doesn't make sense. Because we said, before June 2nd, boots found behind the dirt mound. Mentioning about the gun key fob disappearing and then reappearing later. A lot happened in a short space of time and it happened before spring cleaning. So the family, the family, the police had enough time to check Dylan's farm very early on and enough time to pass by the grain shed to look at the dirt mound where the boots were taken, but not at one point did any of them think, hmm, maybe we should go inside of the grain shed 
to have a look about there. No, we'll delay that. And then comes June 2nd, then comes Brenner coming on into the place, walking about, moving the truck which Dylan drove on the day of the 28th, which is valuable as evidence, bagging stuff, four to eight bags, taking them away, no protesting, no resistance, and then after that, oh, police, family, let's take a look inside of the grain shed, after Brenner possibly took valuable evidence away. And that from the 30th of May up to the 1st of June, they at least had a couple of days to potentially check the grain shed property out inside. But supposedly they didn't or they didn't check thoroughly enough. Then comes the day later, June 2nd, when Brenner takes items away. Brenner could have t took items away from the shed on the 29th, on the 30th on the 1st of June, but chose to do it on the 2nd of June. Why that day specifically? Is it because it was that build-up of now the police are ready to investigate the grain shed and that's why they were stood outside and the family too and Brenner was getting worried thinking they've narrowed it down now, they're about to start investigating here on screen and that Brenner still has items inside so we better go in quick before they do and move the items about. But considering Brenner had two to three days to do it beforehand, why didn't he do it before the 2nd of June? Why not, right? If you think about it, on the... Apologies, I've missed out the 31st of May as well. So Brenner had about three to four days before June 2nd to do spring cleaning, yet he didn't. Even on the 31st of May with the Kurt Wadsworth call, um, the police presence shifting focus down to Montello, the family as well. Even if it was just for one day, who was on site? Not as many people, if not none at all, which would have gave Brenner the chance to go into the shed and then clean the stuff out whilst the police weren't there. So why did Brenner choose to do it days later when the police and the family were there to witness Brenner doing what he's doing? Was Brenner that dumb or did he feel that invincible that he could get away with it in the presence of authority? And yet Brenner had an easier chance to do it days before when the family and police were in Montello investigating that, uh, that hostage situation, the false call made by Kurt right? Why did Brenner make it harder on himself on June 2nd? Is there a deeper reason behind it or did Brenner just suddenly think, oh, I've just reminded myself, oh, I probably should move stuff about? Because if other people in the background want to play it down and devalue it and say, oh, Brenner was just simply moving trash about, right? Corey said that. Was Corey at the scene of the crime at the time of when Brenner was taking items away? No. So how would she know visually? Surely Candice Cooley, Justin Rounds would know more than Corey when the family were actually there in plain sight to see Brenner doing what he was doing and the police too, right? With common sense, you'd agree with that, okay? So if Brenner was just simply clearing up trash because he's a good, tidy boy, would he have done it any other time beforehand? No. You look at the dirt mound, a complete mess, okay? You look at the grain shed property, still mess on the ground after. Some people could say, well, there was just a lot of rubbish, so Brenner could only get rid of so much. Why go out of your way all the, all the way down to Wendover to dispose of those items then when you could just chuck it in the desert, bury it in the ground, and no one would even bat an eyelid on you because who cares? Who would care out there? At times, it seems to be lawless and away from police. So I don't think Brenner is environmentally friendly. I don't think he cares about being green, okay? Maybe more red in anger and snapping. So for Brenner to choose June the 2nd, the hardest day to dispose of stuff because of the presence of police authority, family, etc., but still doing it and moving the vehicle and being successful and disposing of the items afterwards. And that if the counterpoint is, oh, it was just simple trash in the grain shed, well, did he do it any other time before that? Probably not. 
could he have done it at a later point? Yes, because it wasn't a pressing matter. I don't think Brenner would be concerned with the amount of trash in the grain shed property if it was a lot of beer cans and paper, cardboard, wood, whatever. I don't think Brenner would care at that moment, thinking that's more of a priority or danger than the disappearance of Dylan, right? It just doesn't make any sense. It's weird. It really is weird, June 2nd. So what I would say is Dylan's phone and the time-lapse footage is one of the most critical pieces of evidence in the case and a key turning point in especially Brenner being charged with the murder and desecration of Dylan Rounds. But then in terms of the weirdest event to have, have occurred within the Dylan Rounds case investigation has to be the spring cleaning due to who was responsible for it, who tagged along afterwards, Don Hatley of all people, once again, where they went with the bags, the fact that it was chosen on that day, at that time, at that moment, by it must have been of priority and importance to Brenner, besides simple trash, because you could have chosen any other day to do it, but Brenner decided to do it on the verge of when police and family were near to the shed, maybe at the time of when they were going to investigate it, and Brenner needed to clear up just before they did do that, in case they would have found what Brenner had there. Now, my original question still stands. Before June the 2nd, in between the 30th of May and the 1st of June, did any police or family step into the grain shed property at the time of when the spring cleaning didn't happen, right? So before spring cleaning and after the 29th of May, when the family came on down to this area and the police eventually turned up, as the family were searching about from Dylan's farm to the grain shed property in the dirt mound and coming across the boots, did any of them ever think, hmm, let's go into the grain shed and look about? Or maybe they weren't able to because of the truck being inside of the shed and it being an obstruction. Harder to get into, harder to look about. That's all I can say, right? And as for that hole in the ground and supposedly the FBI being responsible for that, I assume that happened after the June 2nd spring cleaning, right? That's what I'm thinking. So it makes you think, doesn't it? Now, Forgot to mention, but look what we see on screen, okay? You see the dirt mound back there, obviously hole in the ground just in front, just behind that wooden table or near to it. Kind of a blind spot because it goes into the ground, it's a hole. So obviously this would have been taken after the spring cleaning, of course. On the left, you've got a bit of a gate stood up, propped up on the far left-hand side of the screen, which is similar to this gate here because it connects together, right? That gate stood up, propped up, is damaged because what we saw from a different angle, it was bent and twisted. Maybe Dylan and his grain truck backing into it and damaging it, right? One of the motives behind Brenner snapping on the day of the 28th in the morning. You can also see a blue bit of rope wrapped around the gate. So possibly that blue rope, if it is rope, would have been used to tie it together with the gate on the left. So maybe no padlock needed, just rope. Now, why would you need a gate like this, a small little gate on such a greatly sized grain shed? Probably because of the horse, horse gate. This gate big enough to keep a horse inside of the shed. That Brenner didn't want his horse, Briscoe at the time, roaming about all over the place because it would possibly get lost or run out if the gate wasn't closed elsewhere, right? So by keeping it enclosed in here, it was one way around it. There was hay on the ground, as you see there, and also behind there, behind the wooden beams, okay? So there was a presence of a horse at some point. Was the horse in the grain shed on the day Dylan was backing his grain truck in the shed? I don't know. That's never really been cleared up. If it was, maybe Dylan damaged the gate, it caused the horse to panic, it created a lot of noise and commotion, and then Brenner was startled and defensive over his horse and protective and then snapped on Dylan. Motives behind it, just suggesting, okay. But is there anything that stands out? Well, to be honest, these chairs and table, 
ever be truly honest with you? Were they like that when Glorin Dellen and Salty Pancakes went down? I don't think so. But they were like that in the nighttime footage provided by Justin Rounds at a later point months on. So whilst this article talks about a range of stuff and including the spring cleaning, something makes me think, if I'm being honest with you, that this may have been taken long after the spring cleaning, possibly during the presence of when Heavy D and his crew revisited the area months later. Besides the first visit, months after, when Heavy D went down, did the interview with Candice Cooley just in rounds inside of the grain shed property and had chairs rearranged in areas when they were sat down talking. I mean, behind that, the sheeting, it looks like there's another chair there or something, or a stool, can you see? Don't remember ever seeing that there. Was that used by Heavy D when he was sat on it? when talking to Candice Cooley, who was sat in those lawn chairs just in front of the hole. As I said, it didn't, it didn't give a date when the photo was taken, it just said it was by Candice Cooley, right? Items over there, buckets we see in the background, same old. A lot of trash on the right-hand side, the saddle as well. Some of that checks out as to what we've seen previously, okay? The chicken coop, I believe, there with the door on the side. Could Bren have stuffed items in there and then took the items out and then put it in bin bags at the time, right? Um, what we do have, that bookshelf over there, I think it was on the middle shelf besides that white box. There was once a black object on the middle shelf next to the white object. The black object is no longer there, but it was there way back at the start, I think, it was during the Salty Pancakes visit. Salty Pancakes visit was bef was taken before Justin Rounds went down and took a photo in the night. And this photo by Candice Cooley would have been after Salty Pancakes visit because that black object isn't there. When Salty Pancakes went down there himself, mid-2022 maybe, um, there was a black object on the shelf, but it's not here here. So because it's not here on this photo by Canis Cooley, it would have been after Salty Pancakes, and this would have been months after, or a few months after, spring cleaning. So it's not as relevant, the photo, which is unfortunate, but we're just working with what we've got. As for the holes, maybe from the angle and the way the, way the light is shining, there's not as many holes. There was more holes when we looked in the past from a different photo and by a different person. But it might just be the way the light is shining in. I said, if Dylan Rounds was shot and in the grain shed at the time, was there no ballistics report, no analysis of bullet holes? Surely that would be necessary, right? Shovel still in the background, as I can see. But yeah, to visualise what we see on screen, Brenner, well, first of all, grain truck in the shed. These tables and chairs would not be in the middle at the time. So this must have been taken afterwards. That's one way of debunking it. And of course, the hole in the back as well. That's after spring cleaning, of course. So before the hole existed, and before the tables and chairs were in the way, and bef uh, before some other bits and bobs, I guess, grain truck would have obstructed most of the view of the grain shed so if you're walking by it you wouldn't be able to see that far in or see that much to the side so we have obscured vision maybe Candice Cooley just in rounds maybe police did peep in with the heads but they couldn't have a thorough look or a thorough investigation because there was too many items in the way and that may have occurred on the 30th of May when they first got down there as for the 31st of May they couldn't do much because they had to focus on Montello due to that false call and possible decoy by Kurt Wadsworth and then 1st of June returning back here and focusing back on the land, then 2nd of June, maybe getting prepared to move the grain truck out and go in themselves and search thoroughly. And that's when Brenner may have caught wind of that and may have heard, overheard a conversation and thought to himself, maybe I'll do it on this day because they're about to check for themselves. And I best move the grain truck, get in there quick, bag all the stuff up, get rid of the important evidence so that when the police go in, they won't find anything. That's the only way of looking at it, right? Because if 
the task wasn't that important and it was simple, rubbish and trash. I don't think Brenner would choose that day to do it on if it wasn't that important. It was important to him, so it must be important to the case, right? That's what I would say. And that there was some key evidence left in here or placed in here beforehand when Brenner didn't anticipate the presence of police and family to come on down so quick and respond. So Brenner was kind of caught off guard and that's why he did what he did. Desperate times, desperate measures and it just so happened to be in his favour and he was able to get away with it. My question to you is, I wonder from which angle was Brenner standing? Because if the police and the family were able to see clearly Brenner take the grain truck out of the grain shed as we see here, obviously the opening would have been clearer and this is what you would have seen. This is what Brenner would have seen when walking back in once the truck was outside. It's all on show, isn't it? It's all on show, unless it's behind that red box. Piss off. Behind the red box, round the corner where that tool table is, up against that window back there, right? Or maybe on the right-hand side, round that corner there, behind the horse gate, right? Was it the left-hand side or the right-hand side where Brenner was seen bagging items in a bin bag? Was it the left or the right? It would be of my thoughts to have been on the right-hand side because there's more clutter and trash compared to the left, which is a bit more bare and scarce. Brenner would have stood out more on the left. I'm just surprised that the police or family didn't have a peek to see what was Brenner exactly putting in the bags. I'm surprised the family didn't have a peek in the bags once Brenner put them on the back of his truck, right? If you're that curious, if Brenner is doing something out of the ordinary and is able to do it, um, despite breaking laws and, in a way, tampering with a crime scene and evidence, no charges filed there but should have been, then I'm sure Candice Cooley and Justin Rounds have every right to be looking through those trash bags that were put in the back of Brenner's truck. But no one did. Do you see how wasted the opportunities were, right? So let me know your thoughts. Was Brenner on the left or right-hand side of when disposing and putting stuff in bags? Was it on the right? Was it further back, round the back of the chicken coop? Where do you think it was? Where do you think the original items were which Brenner was trying to get rid of? Were they of Dylan's possessions? Were they of Brenner's? Was it possible crime scene weapon? The fact that the police or family didn't report on it beforehand or find anything before June 2nd would make you think either they didn't bother searching to begin with or that the stuff was well hidden by Brenner but it would have eventually been found by police or family if a forest search was conducted. But by the time they did, Brenner already disposed of the stuff beforehand. That's my take on this, okay? Even after spring cleaning and the items being bagged up and then put on the back of Brenner's pickup truck, how long did those bags remain there for? Were they disposed of immediately on the same day or later? Because if it was a day or two later, there was still a chance. Even though the items were taken directly from the scene of the crime inside, let's call it that, there was still a chance with the bags being in proximity to the area where somebody could have looked through them to see what was inside. But we'll never know. And that's what the biggest, most frustrating problem is within this case. So when looking back at that, if you want a brief summary, in terms of the actions that weren't done which could have been done to then prevent evidence, possible evidence being lost, was intervention from the moment Brenner stepped foot into the grain shed. He should have been denied of access, first of all. If not that, at least the prevention of Brenner leaving the property at the scene of the crime, because he's treated as a part of the case because of proximity, knowing Dylan, and may have seen something at the time, because Brenner was seen as a person of interest in the early days, so he shouldn't have been allowed to leave the area. Okay, what about Don Hatley? Um, a little bit different because of living further away, not living at the scene of the crime. But Don was still able to come on down and visit, I guess. Um, yeah, and besides uh, not letting Brenner leave, what the the other action that should have been taken if the first action wasn't would have been just getting hold of those bags. All you had to do was grab the bag, take it away. It's not like you're going to get in that much trouble. If it's trash in a bag, you're not exactly stealing. Not really. 
if if you're taking valuable items from a private property from somewhere else and it's not even to do with the case, not, no link at all, and you're taking it away for your own gain and you're leaving the area, yeah, stealing. But if the items are already on site and you're just simply moving them about, you're not exactly you're not exactly stealing, you're actually conserving possible key evidence from being lost and taken away. Why didn't Candice Cooley or Justin Rounds do that or police? Unless they just felt that at the time they trusted the police, so if the police allowed it, then it must mean it's an okay thing. But if they knew it from day one, in, in the first, first day or first couple of days of what happened, happened within the first week, well, June 2nd, surely there would have been a bit more suspicious by then, knowing that Brenner was the one responsible by then and seeing what he did on that day. But now, not much done. Now, in terms of the, the, the red flags, this is definitely a big, big red flag, right? Am I saying that if those bags weren't taken away and they were retrieved by the right people, that it would have led to Dylan being found by now? Well, that, that's no guarantee, but it would have been interesting, wouldn't it, to see what other evidence that was there. I mean, if it was a murder weapon, it could have tied to Brenner sooner than later. And it could have at least shed some light on how Dylan was taken out just before the autopsies were done. Because obviously they can't do that yet because Dylan's not been found. But, you know, the more evidence you have, the easier the case is, right? And the higher the chances of getting justice for the right reasons. So... Will it ever be found? Maybe not, because I think the priority nowadays is all about Dylan, finding Dylan and the remains. Forget about the trash bags, forget about the other evidence, it's all about Dylan. But what if Dylan is tied with the trash bags as for the location of where all the things were dumped? Just as a suggestion. What if, from the alternative unpopular idea that desecration took place on the spot, and Dylan was in those trash bags, somehow, then taken away. Personally, I don't fully agree with that, because surely there would have been a scent, flies, or something giving off a, an indicator like that. So, most likely, it was more so, let's say, clothing, or the murder weapon, or the wallet, stuff like that. But if it was clothing, what, why didn't Brenner bag his clothing from his trailer then why did he forget about that did he just simply forget or did he not care about that but he cared enough to get rid of what was in the grain shed see this is what you got to understand okay if you're skeptical okay skeptical of this big red flag of spring cleaning that Brenner what he was getting rid of at the time was just a coincidence with the the police presence and all of that that Brenner was simply getting rid of trash and that as for the day it all occurred on, it was just a coincidence Brenner felt like it on the day and he was being awkward. Okay, okay. Just uh, just ask me this. If that really is the case, how can Brenner be so focused on getting rid of trash and cleaning up the area in general, bagging stuff, but he completely neglects a key piece of evidence in his own trailer, his shirt, which was caught on a time-lapse footage of him wearing it at the time, and the shirt itself, which did have blood on, and DNA traces of Dylan on that shirt. Surely that would be more of high priority than some simple, meaningless trash in the grain shed. So it makes me believe, what I would say more so, Brenner caught off guard, underestimated the response time of police and family, ended up realised he was caught short and there was still too much evidence left about, was in a rush, in a hurry, was successful in getting rid of stuff at such a bad timing but was invincible at that moment, lucky to get away with it but not quite lucky in the mistakes he made along the way because normally when you're in a rush you, de you tend to forget things. When you're in a rush, you may slip up. And I think that's what happened to Brenner. If Brenner knew ahead of himself and was ahead of time that he knew exactly how long he had to dispose of everything, June 2nd spring cleaning probably would have never have happened and it probably would have happened on the 29th of May before family got down there. And if Brenner was able to clean up quicker, he probably would have got the rid of the shirt as well inside of his trailer, Right? So because he underestimated time and the response rate, I think that's what caught him off guard and that's what led to him making mistakes. 
and taking risk as well, such as spring cleaning, okay? He made it harder for himself, just like how the family have made it harder for themselves when trying to search for Dylan by turning down any potential offers by Brenner as some kind of plea deal. Even if the family don't have control over it or the final say, their mindset and attitude was, we're going to do it ourselves. So they're making it harder, harder on themselves, but they've got a reason for it. As for Brenner, he made it all harder on himself when disposing of stuff because he left it too late. Right, that's what I'd say. But regardless of timing, I'd say it's a massive red flag in the case because it was allowed to happen, wasted opportunities, several opportunities to stop Brenner from doing it. First of all, first time round of getting there, searching the grain shed before Brenner had the chance to do what he did. Second of all, apprehending Brenner at the time of disrupting possible evidence and contaminating the scene of a crime, which can break laws itself, that's taking place, and slash or taking the bags out of Brenner's pickup truck and looking through them on the spot at the time to see what was Brenner really doing. Because if you were protesting or you didn't think it was right, you surely you should have had the right to walk on over to Brenner's truck to look inside and at least find out that way and then catch the police's attention and say, hey, look, Look what Brenner's done here. There's key evidence here. Brenner could have been caught red-handed in that moment much earlier, much earlier on. Because just imagine an alternative where Brenner bagged everything up, four to eight bags, put them on the back of his pickup truck, can his coolies just in rounds, walked on over, looked inside of the bags, saw that there was some possessions of Dylan or much more, alerted the police. Brenner caught red-handed, apprehended just like that, boom, no more trouble and possibly getting a bit more justice sooner than later. No guarantee, but that's one way of looking at it. So I think the overall theme of this video is that spring cleaning, based off common sense and all the factors taken into consideration, I do hope people watch from start to finish to understand this, I would say that it's justified to be a big red flag of what could have been avoided and what could have been collected, such as potential evidence, okay? Is it a complete lost cause now? Or is there a very small chance that some searchers or indirect people could come across those trash bags? It depends, right? If it's out in the desert somewhere, it could be found by someone. If it was taken to Wendover and disposed of properly, well, it probably will never be retrieved or found or questioned after. But it does make you think on top of it all that Brenner potentially will go out of his way at a risky time when police are there to bag stuff up, which could be evidence or maybe not of importance, bag it up, then take it down to Wendover, cover a great distance and mileage just to throw it away. And let's say it's not that important, the trash, okay? To cover all that distance just to chuck it at a landfill or a tipping point, whatever you call it. He'll do that, but he'll leave his shirt, the shirt that was worn during the murder of Dylan Rounds in his trailer. And that Dylan's phone, no, not taken miles away, but just dumped in a pond nearby. It's so all over the place. So would it make you think that whatever was in those bin bags, due to the potential distance of where they were taken to, surpasses the hierarchical list of Dylan's phone? Right? And Brenner's shirt. Surely. Surely there must be of higher value within those trash bags than the likes of Dylan phone. If Dylan's phone was dumped nearby at Lucent Pond, why weren't the trash bags too? Why were the trash bags taken further in distance? Is it because there was greater evidence and weight within those bags, which would have tied back to Brenner more so? It makes you think. It's really weird. And it is kind of dark. See, this is what I'm saying about mysteries, unsolved mysteries. People think the Dylan Rounds case, oh, it's true crime. Oh, the person was murdered. Oh, the person's been caught or supposedly has. But what about those in the background? What about Don Hatley walking free, yet spent quite a lot of time in the presence of Brenner at a time of when it happened and everything unfolding afterwards? So the shady stuff Brenner was doing, such as spring cleaning, Don Hartley tagged along later in the possible disposing of those bin bags. Just like the possibilities that Don assisted in the disposing of Dylan, let's just say it like that, as a potential. So there's still some dodgy people out there that engaged with Brenner at the time and after onwards, in the presence of Brenner. 
seen as a person of interest, you could call it, but not apprehended. Now, so that's what's kind of weird, right? And the fact that we don't know, we may never know what was in those trash bags. That is a mystery, isn't it? The potential, what could have been. That very small chance that a piece, a part, or Dylan as a whole may have been in those bags, and that you will never find Dylan unless you find those bags. That's like a mystery, isn't it? Potential, that's all I'm saying. And then you've got the jewelry truck. What the hell was that doing there? What was that transporting? What was that delivering? What was that taking away from the grain shed property on the day of Dylan's death? I wonder. So you've got the key theme of a presence and then departing from the area. One on the 28th, the jewelry truck, either delivering, dropping off something, or maybe taking something away. Evidence, Dylan, maybe. And then later you got Brenner himself taking items away from the area and going elsewhere. Do you see a pattern? And then you got Don Hatley afterwards, months later, leaving the area, literally. So things with time are being taken away from the scene of the crime or the area in general, people or items. Why? Why the departure of things at such weird timing? Removing, covering up traces. These unsolved mysteries m might not be solved, but, you know, if we direct a bit of focus on these and hopefully people do share and like this video, especially this one, because there are some deep, you know, perspectives behind this all right? Hopefully, all in all, you found this video interesting. Hopefully that the video of this, you know, the title of this video supports the weight and importance behind the video itself. Unless I've got to reword it at some point. Sometimes it's hard to put everything into a few sentences when there's so much talked about, like today. I'll have to try and figure that out. But in the meantime, we'll see what happens next. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, whenever that is. Goodbye, good night for now.